नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन डीसी जनरेटर इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द ओपन सर्किट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ डीसी जनरेटर सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग टाइम लेट्स बिगिन द सेशन दिस सेशन इज डिवाइडेड इनटू टू हाफ्स इन फर्स्ट हाफ वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज ओ एंड वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ ओ एंड इन सेकेंड हाफ वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू परफॉर्म द ओ so first half explain the complete theory and in second half we are going to perform this experiment into the laboratory we'll take the readings and plot it and everything will be there in second half so stay connected in this video and in between i am going to ask you some key questions by answering that key questions you can verify by yourself that you have understood this video properly or not so let's begin our today's session so the first question is what is open circuit characteristics let me tell you that open circuit characteristics is nothing but the plot the graph between induced voltage and the field current the graph looks like this on vertical axis there is induced emf and on horizontal axis there is field current and the plot between them looks like this so this is what the open circuit characteristics the occ is also known as the magnetizing characteristics and why this is known as magnetizing characteristics because of the nature and the curvature of this graph let me show you see the graph this graph looks like the bh curve or the magnetizing curve of any material see this is the piece of iron and this is the conductor if i flow the current through this conductor the magnetizing graph of this iron piece looks like this right so this is known as the bh curve or the magnetizing curve and our open circuit characteristics also looks the similar to this and that is why this occ is also known as the magnetizing characteristics of dc generator why we are plotting the graph between these two quantities there is a reason behind that let me show you the reason eg is equal to the equation for induced emf in dc generator is noops by 60 ampere this is just a technique to remember noops and phi pz noops by 60 a this is speed flux pole number of conductor and parallel path but observe this thing this much of quantity is constant once the generator is constructed so you can write this equation like this k constant you just mention this things as k so k into phi into n now if you keep the speed constant if you are plotting this graph for n1 speed then this is also constant so you can write k dash into phi so the induced emf is directly proportional to the flux and this flux is directly proportional to the field current so indirectly we are going to verify this relation by changing the field current indirectly we are changing the flux and observing the relation between this flux and induced emf so ultimately by plotting this open circuit characteristics we are verifying this relation eg is proportional to flux phi when the speed is kept constant now let me draw the circuit diagram for shunt generator so this is the shunt generator now let's understand the graph see when the field current is zero at zero field current we are getting some induced emf eg over here when there is no field current if is zero 
एट जीरो फील्ड करंट वी आर गेटिंग सम अमाउंट ऑफ इंड्यूस डी एम एफ एंड दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ द रेसिडियल मैग्नेटिज्म इन टू द पोल वेन प्रीवियसली दिस जनरेटर इज ऑपरेटेड देर इज सम अमाउंट ऑफ रेसिडियल मैग्नेटिज्म इज स्टेड इन टू द पोल्स ऑफ दैट जनरेटर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट रेसिडियल मैग्नेटिज्म दिस ई एम एफ इंड्यूसिस नाउ लेट इज अंडरस्टैंड हाउ फुल ई एम एफ इंड्यूसिस इन अ जनरेटर सी एट जीरो फील्ड करंट कंडीशन देर इज सम अमाउंट ऑफ इंड्यूस डी एम एफ इन टू द जनरेटर दिस स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ इंड्यूस डी एम एफ विल बी कम अक्रॉस दिस टर्मिनल एज वेल एज दिस शंट फील्ड वाइंडिंग सो एज देर इज सम वोल्टेज अक्रॉस दिस रेजिस्टेंस और द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ शंट फील्ड वाइंडिंग देर इज द फ्लो ऑफ करंट इफ वी टेक द रेशियो ऑफ द वोल्टेज एंड करंट that ratio will looks linear the ratio the slope of that ratio will be the shunt field windings resistance so let us plot this linear line the line of that shunt field windings resistance we will shortly call it as rsh so this is the line of rsh when there is a small induced emf because of this much of voltage applied across these two terminals a small current flows through the shunt winding and that current is this much if1 right now because of this if1 current there is small amount of flux induces and that flux links with the armature and because of the residual magnetism and the additional linkage of the flux more emf induces and that emf is little bit higher than the previous one because of this higher emf current increases up to if2 and because of the increase in current the flux also increases so because of the flux increment induced emf increases because of that current increases field current again emf in increases field current increases emf increases field current increases and emf again increases and it is reach up to this point which is known as the stable point so the characteristics or the induced emf reaches up to this point which is known as the stable point and generator generates the maximum emf em which is up to the stable point so this so we have just seen that how emf induces in that generator now just observe that this initial section was because of the residual magnetic field now we have observed that after this line the relation between eg and if for this much of area this looks linear so from a to b or from these two in between these two points the relation between eg and if is linear but after b there is a big amount of change in if but very small amount of change in induced dmf and this is because of the saturation of pole once the poles get saturated there is no big change in induced flux and because of no big change in induced flux the d phi by dt is small and there is no big difference in this d phi by dt there is no major difference in induced emf so that is why when the pole gets saturated the induced emf is not changing linearly with the field current this is rsh resistance we just call this rsh as initial resistance r1 now we are going to change this variable resistance let's increase this resistance up to r3 so when there is r3 resistance in field circuit the maximum emf that can induce is up to this point so generator cannot induced its full voltage now let me place some resistance in between r1 and r3 
लाइक दिस वी विल कॉल इट एज आर टू द स्लोप ऑफ दिस आर टू रेजिस्टेंस इज लुक्स लाइक टेंजेंट टू दिस कर्वेचर इन दिस कंडीशन वी आर गेटिंग स्टेबल पॉइंट इन बिटवीन दीज टू लाइन्स ए एंड बी सो द इंड्यूस ई एम एफ कैन बी एनी वेयर इन बिटवीन ए एंड बी एंड दिस इज अनस्टेबल कंडीशन वॉट एवर रेजिस्टेंस वी हैव प्लेस्ड इन टू द फील्ड सर्किट बिकॉज ऑफ दैट रेजिस्टेंस द लीनियर लाइन ऑफ दैट रेजिस्टेंस वेन इट इज टेंजेंट टू दिस ग्राफ this resistance is known as the critical resistance of that generator so we can write that r1 is less than r2 is less than r3 so at r1 condition we are getting proper amount of induced emf a rated induced emf r2 is the critical resistance and that gives us unstable point of operation and in r3 we are getting very low voltage at terminal so from this graph it is clear to us that resistance of shunt field winding should always be less than the critical resistance of that generator and this is important information that we can get from the open circuit characteristics this graph is plot at the rated speed and rated if we change the speed things going to be a little bit different now let's observe the graph when we change the speed so this is our rsh resistance and this graph when speed is n1 for example if we reduces the speed of generator the graph looks like this this is for n2 speed if we further reduce the speed graph looks like this so from this we can get some important information and how we can get that information let's see this we have seen this equation previously eg is equal to k phi n previously we have kept speed constant now we are keeping the flux constant so in the constant flux condition initially we have n1 speed so we will call it instead of eg we just call it as e1 so if we change the speed to n2 this k and phi is constant so we will get e2 speed as these two quantities are constant we can compare this like e1 by n1 is equal to e2 by n Two. So, if we want to calculate one of the unknown quantity, we can calculate the unknown quantity from this relation, and we can verify and establish this relation using this open circuit characteristics. Let me write this equation for E two. So, E two is equal to E one by N one into N two. See from this graph, we can write. n1 is greater than n2 is greater than n3 so n2 is less than n1 so n2 is less than n1 in this case the ratio of n2 by n1 is less than 1 and when this ratio is less than 1 the e2 is definitely going to be less than e1 now if we reduce the speed such that this rsh become the tangent to the speed n3 then this n3 speed becomes the critical speed that means you cannot further reduce the speed of that generator to have the proper amount of induced emf and if you reduce the speed further you are not going to get the full amount of induced emf so this is the complete understanding of the open circuit characteristics now we are going to learn the importance of this characteristics what is the use of open circuit characteristics the first use is we can calculate the critical resistance and from critical resistance we can arrange the resistance of shunt field winding and we can find what amount of 
variable resistance we can add into the shunt field winding to regulate the induced EMF. Another important information that we can get from this OCC is critical speed. The amount of critical speed we can get from the OCC. The next is verification of equation. We have seen that E is proportional to phi into N. So that verification we can have using the open circuit characteristics. And the last but the most important thing is characteristics verification after rewinding. For example, you are using this DC generator for two years and because of any of the fault, this generator needs to be rewinded. And after rewinding, we need to verify and need to check whether the characteristics of this generator is as it was previously or not. And to verify that, we are going to plot the OCC for newly wound generator and going to compare it with the OCC given by the manufacturers. And if they are similar, we can assume that after rewinding, this generator is going to perform the same way it was performing previously. So these are the important information which we can get from the OCC and that is why we need to plot this OCC. Now there is two important question for you. Why the resistance of shunt field winding should always be less than the critical resistance? This is your question number one and you should answer the question number one into the comment section. And your question number two is what is critical speed? So you need to answer these two questions into the comment section so you can verify that you have understood it properly or not. This is the end of the first half of this video and now we are going to jump to the second half. In second half we are going to observe the practical circuit diagram to perform the OCC. We are going to lab, we will perform the experiment on the lab setup, we will get the results and plot it as a graph and we will discuss the results. So now you need to jump to the video of second half. The link for that video is given in description box and a card is given above here. So from anywhere you can jump to that video. But don't forget to watch that video. So see you in second half.